Well, hey folks, my name is Brad, and today I have hiked up into the mountains of Vermont, and I've brought my metal detector because this piece of property that I'm standing on right now, over 200 years ago, uh, was an old farm. The stone foundation where the folks lived is right behind the camera over there. But the landowner who invited me here today has also said that there's a hiking trail that passes through and he allows people to use that. So the things that we find today could very well be 200 years old or just dropped yesterday. We're gonna have to wait and find out. Now, if this is one of my first videos that you've seen, I post one of these every single Friday. So if you like what you see here today, consider subscribing or just come on back next week. I'm gonna get out my metal detector and see what we can find. 64. Whoa, 64, that looks like silver. So we're in an old area, uh, but we're also on a modern trail. So when I find something like this, mind races, is it old or is it modern? Just based on the design, I assume it's modern. Looks like maybe a little opal. Oh yeah, that's definitely silver. When it ranked so low, I didn't suspect it would be silver, but you can tell by the way it's cleaning up here. The real test is if it has a mark, a 925 mark, to designate sterling silver. Okay, I see it. It says sterling. Uh, because they didn't actually start hallmarking jewelry, uh, silver jewelry, with sterling or 925 until I, think, I believe it was the end of the 1800s. So we know that this is at least not that old. Hopefully you could make out there, it says Sterling. A cuff bracelet. The last time I found a bracelet like this, I called it a bangle, and then I was promptly corrected in the comment section of the video, uh, because apparently bangles go all the way around, cuffs do not. So we have a silver ladies cuff, less than 100 years old. How old, I have no idea, but still happy to find it. Let's see what else we can find here. This is a very large target, but it's nice sounding, 78, 80. Here it is. Whoa. What in the world? Man, deep high tones like that one 99% of the time is going to be deep iron. Almost never something cool like this. Now, is it a treasure? Mm, not really. If it was the whole thing, maybe it would be a treasure. But look at how ornate this is right here. At first I thought maybe it was part of an old lamp or something, but then I noticed this. That is a hinge which leads me to believe that this was more than likely the lid to an old, maybe not a teapot, maybe just a beautiful vessel of some kind. I don't know. Let me know what you think this was a lid to. Don't say urn for ashes. I know some of you are thinking it. I'm gonna say kettle of some kind. Awesome. I wish the rest of it was here so we could solve that mystery and we could have what if it was full of coins or something? Man, how do you lose something like this? <laughs> well, in this stream, we've got a nice 85. Let's see if we can get to it. I'm going to attempt to throw it off to the side here, whatever it is. Yeah, it's over here now. Giant silver nugget. I'm just kidding, that's aluminum. Melted can from a campfire upstream, no doubt. Looks, looks pretty awesome though, doesn't it? Well, what I just found here, I didn't find with my metal detector. And I found this in years past, and I try to always show it because it is so bizarre. You can see here, there is a mass of clear gelatinous material. And what I find so fascinating about this stuff is nobody knows what it is for sure. Uh, they call it star jelly. 
and there's a bunch of folklore surrounding it going back centuries and centuries. Uh, people thought a long time ago that this fell during meteor showers. Why, I'm not sure. I think maybe the hypothesis now is it's some kind of slime mold, but I only see it in the springtime and it's just crazy that nobody knows what it is for sure. Star jelly. Did it fall during a meteor shower? Probably not. Hopefully it means we're gonna find a few more cool things today. Yeah. Oh, nice. Wow. Man, look at that. Uh, so I call these jingle bells. Other folks call them crotal bells. And probably one of the most common questions I get is, what is that word you say? Crotal. Uh, C-R-O-T-A-L crotal bell um, or you can call these a sleigh bell especially here in the mountains of Vermont uh, they were all over the horse-drawn sleighs in the winter time that was the way to get around up here in the mountains I love finding these things they were a common drop they would break off of uh, the leather straps that they were oftentimes affixed to and just recently I found an old catalog I can't remember the exact date. It was late 1800s, which showed just how much money one of these would have cost. And it was surprising. Not as much as you might expect. They probably missed it when it was gone, uh, but it wouldn't have uh, made them go, go broke, thankfully. If there ever was initials for the maker's mark, it would have probably been here where it broke. You see, it's just packed full of mud. Common find but one of my favorites to find. This one will never make a sound again, unfortunately, but I'll still put it on my leather strap of all my jingle bells. Right there, I just found a solid brass ring, like horse equipment or something, and this is probably the same thing. Whoa, nope. What in the world is this? <laughs> well, I've spent some time cleaning this thing up and I can make out most of the text, but it seems as though there was a hole punched in it and it was worn for some reason. And where the hole is, you'll see in a second, uh, all of the text is worn away. But hopefully you can see it says the spot, the something or other up here, uh, about 62 MCK Street, Haverhill, that's uh, Massachusetts. And this side, the holder something or other will be allowed 50 cents rebate on suit or overcoat. So this is an advertising token, right? They would have given these out as a form of advertisement and it's worth 50 cents, it's a half dollar. In my opinion, Oftentimes these types of tokens are more interesting historically, of course. It tells a story about these people, right? They must have traveled to Haverhill, Massachusetts from the town in Vermont that I'm in right now, which is quite a ways. They brought this back with them for some reason. Maybe they had plans to go get themselves an overcoat. I'm not entirely sure when this is from, if I had to guess, I'd say the early part of the 1900s, but it could be slightly older. Yeah, that's a cool find. 50 cents, half dollar. I haven't found a half dollar in a long time. I'll take it. So cool. 86. Oh, it's a, folks call these buggy brakes. Never seen one with a split like that before. Uh, but these went on the end of a shaft for a wagon. You can imagine two long shafts that went up alongside the horses or the oxen or whatever. This would have been on the end of those long poles. And then when they took off the animal, 
these would sit on the ground, which is why oftentimes when we find these, they're worn right here. When I first started the hobby, I also called them buggy brakes because they do look like you could use them like a brake to drag and slow down the cart, but that's not what they are. Sounded great on a metal detector. So here in Vermont and really New England, the largest animal you'd ever come across up here in the mountains and in the forest is the moose. And despite their immense size, they're quite elusive. I think I've only ever seen four or five, you know, considering how much time I spend in the forest, they're hard to find. But it's not that uncommon to come across their droppings. <laughs> Typically don't show the camera this stuff, but I just came across something I've never seen before. So here you can see moose poop, right? You can see how large it is compared to my boot. But then I took a look around and there's a pile there, 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 another one right there. I take a little walk and there's more. It's absolutely everywhere. All over this area. So I don't know what they were doing here. If maybe they were just feeding or if it was the rut from the fall, or maybe they're having like a secret meeting. <laughs> In any case, I'm gonna take a look around because the one thing I've always wanted to find is an antler shed from a moose. I found plenty from white-tailed deer. They drop them in the springtime. Never found a moose shed. So I'm gonna take a look around. If I don't find anything, I'm gonna move on, see if we can find some more metal. <laughs> Weird spot. It's an old one. All right, can we make up the date? Mm, I don't think so. Not out here, at least. But this is the old road. The place I've been spending most of my time detecting is right behind me, and then on the other side of that is that small stream. This is a trail now, but 100 years ago, 200 years ago, this was the old road. It was well-traveled, and people were traveling around on horses and wagons and things were bound to fall out. So far doing this, I've only found a couple modern pennies. So this uh, has my hopes up and I'll be able to find some more old coins here. That would be awesome. All right, good find. Let's keep searching. Right on a little hill here, got a 90. Sounds a little crunchy though, like it could be iron. Is. So I've been staring at this little thing I just found for a little while and I know what it is, but given we're in a place where there's like mixed time frames, we have the real old stuff and could be possibly modern items, I'm not sure which it's from. So hopefully you can see very clearly here, this is a knife blade, but looking at this end, this appears to be a lead pewter material. At first I thought it was the end of a pocket knife, but there's no crease right here. I did hit it with my shovel here. You can see it's shiny metal, uh, but it's crumbly like lead pewter is. So what I think this is, is um, maybe even early 1800s knife. Now what kind of knife would have this big of a handle but this small of a blade. My first impression is that it'd be like a woodworking knife for doing fine work, big handle, small, sharp blade, because I've never seen table utensils look anything like this. And this is heavy. This piece right here is heavy, tiny little blade. Let me know what you think they used this for. Too heavy for the table, tiny blade. I'm gonna guess woodworking. So cool. Shot a target basically on the surface right there. Just kicked it. I saw that. Blue Mountain. 
Not sure where the Blue Mountains are, but we're in the Green Mountains today. I don't think that's incredibly old. <laughs> we'll keep it anyway. All right, high tone, 85. Kind of junky though. Nope. Whoa, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What is that? So, last year, I found one of these, just a fragment of one. And in the moment, I had no idea what it was. It's very pretty, it's very heavy, made out of some kind of lead alloy. No idea. Went to Facebook, posted a photo to consult my very, very smart audience. And the consensus was it was more than likely a handle to a cruet set, probably Victorian, no older than late 1800s cruet set handle. But now I just found another one and I could be wrong, but this does not look like it's broken off of a cruet set. What in the world is this thing? I have no idea. Maybe now that we've seen the bottom, we can figure out what it is. Is it designed to be off to the side like that? Was it supposed to be straight? I haven't any idea. Let me know your thoughts this time around. If not the handle to a cruet set, a beautiful find regardless, <laughs> regardless of whatever it is. All right, folks, calling it a day. Uh, I somehow managed to get rained on, sleeted on, and snowed on today. But it's springtime in the mountains before the black flies get unbearable, so I enjoyed my day. The finds were, to be quite honest, pretty bizarre today. They really spanned the entire 200 years where people have been here, uh, both the real old stuff when people lived out here and then fairly modern things that people dropped as they were just kind of walking through. Fun day, I've got everything laid out on a stump over here. Let's take a look. Well, now that it's all laid out, much larger pile of treasures than I was expecting there to be. Starting in the back, kettle lid or pot lid. This is a mystery. It seems more modern, but can't say for sure. A couple iron buckles, a couple pieces of spoon, and we have the old fork. What folks call a buggy break. Uh, that is a part of an old lamp. A few modern coins here. Mystery find. I was hoping that seeing the end of this would solve the mystery, but it just, um, it's even more baffling what that could possibly be. A whole bunch of musket balls. That's kind of a mystery find. We have our blue mountains button along with our seven much older buttons. Our wonderful jingle bell. And then out front, uh, my favorite finds for the day. Indian head scent a silver bracelet. And then, I don't know, I think it might be my favorite find of the day is the advertising token. All in all, a fun day in the woods. All right, folks, well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. It appears to be starting to rain again, so I'm gonna start hiking on out of here. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.